Hello there. Doesn't it make you want to scream? Yet another last gasp Brexit trade deal deadline is set. Firstly, please subscribe and like this video to give my channel a boost. And I'm always uploading new content, so please do check back daily. And a big thanks to my Patreon and PayPal supporters. I think many of us expected a decision to emerge from last night's so-called crunch meeting between the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson and the EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. But it was not to be. And that was despite having only 22 days left as of yesterday and there being a grand canyon-sized gap between the two negotiating positions. And we've gone from last week's pronouncement that there was only a week left to get a deal to there now being four days as they set Sunday as the new deadline. Following last night's dinner meeting, the EU Commission put out the following statement from von der Leyen. We had a lively and interesting discussion on the state of play across the list of outstanding issues. We gained a clear understanding of each other's positions. They remain far apart. We agreed that the team should immediately reconvene to try and resolve these essential issues. We will come to a decision by the end of the weekend. Now what was that she said? We gained a clear understanding of each other's positions? Hasn't she been paying attention during the talks and those lengthy telephone calls with Boris? It sounds more to me like they had a riveting time trudging over well-trodden ground, with the EU side probably getting more and more staggered as it became apparent that Boris hadn't taken time out for dinner in Brussels to cave in to their demands. Well, not yet anyway. Number 10 put out a press release saying, The Prime Minister and President von der Leyen met for dinner in Brussels this evening. The leaders had a frank discussion about the state of play in the negotiations. They acknowledged that the situation remained very difficult and there were still major differences between the two sides. They agreed that chief negotiators would continue talks over the next few days and that a firm decision should be taken about the future of the talks by Sunday. The Prime Minister is determined not to leave any route to a fair deal untested, but any agreement must respect the independence and sovereignty of the UK. At least this will have reassured those who worried that Boris might be the next Tory Prime Minister to get ambushed in Brussels into agreeing on a sellout. Now I thought the whole point about last night was that the EU Council would be making a decision on any deal at their two-day meeting starting today. If it is conceivable that a deal is reached by Sunday, then one presumes they will have to reconvene at a later date and push the EU Parliament diary further towards Christmas as well. And don't forget that the UK Parliament is due to rise for the festive season next Thursday, and that would only give them four planned sitting days to go through the small print of any deal. Now, if Boris does get an agreement from the EU Commission, it could still fall at the EU Council hurdle. Both right now and in any future trade talks should we part without a deal on the 31st of December. We've already heard how hard President Macron of France says he is prepared to be if the UK doesn't meekly hand over its fish. But there's also Belgium's former Prime Minister and now President of Wallonia, Elio Di Rupo. He's warned that a no-deal Brexit would cost his country 5,000 jobs, and he said he would be asking the Belgian Parliament to veto any future deal that crosses their red lines. He also lambasted Boris Johnson over his mood swings during the talks. Just before last night's meeting, Mr Di Rupo tweeted in French the, and kindly translated by Google... It's been months that we live according to the mood swings of Boris Johnson. His attitude does not allow us to see clearly in the future of relations between the EU and the United Kingdom. For my region, Wallonia, 
the Brexit no deal could represent up to 5,000 jobs lost. The United Kingdom is Wallonia's seventh supplier. I will not hesitate to ask my Parliament to use its right of veto, as was the case for the CETA, if future trade agreements with the United Kingdom cross the red line set by my government. I also want to highlight the need to find an agreement in the interest of the European regions which will be the most proportionately affected. I am thinking in particular of my sister region, Flanders. You'd think he'd be better off taking aim at Brussels for not agreeing on a standard Canada-style trade deal with the UK instead of blaming the party across the table. But Brussels seems more interested in gaining more real estate in the form of Northern Ireland and expanding its exclusive economic zone to encompass UK waters, as well as locking us into their rules, of course. And while this goes on, the International Trade Secretary Liz Truss and her team keep quietly adding to the trade deal score, with the latest being a £17 billion agreement with Singapore. And the EU is desperately holding on to the idea that the UK must be a tamed nation. It recognises the threat to its very existence of a rip-roaringly successful UK. There can be no other explanation for their intransigence. So given the respective positions of both the EU and the UK, as well as Boris's pledge to really stick to the UK red lines, a deal before Sunday does not sound likely. If anything, attitudes seem to be hardening. And in the event of a no-deal Brexit outcome, the blame game will commence. This is when an assessment will be made of what advantages can be gained by one side or the other by proving their negotiating opponent acted in bad faith. And one of the targets for the EU would have been the Northern Ireland Protocol limiting clauses in the UK Internal Market Bill. But after the Joint Committee agreement in principle, those clauses have been dropped. So as long as the agreement in principle is put in place, then the UK will have completed its no-deal implementation of the withdrawal agreement in full. That is, it will be seen to have acted in good faith. And we've paid all the money as demanded so far, including the extra billion quid that came due in the summer because we'd had a more successful 2019 than initially thought. But if we can successfully claim the EU has not done so, has not acted in good faith, then could we be setting up for a tearing up of the withdrawal agreement? And even if that is not the case, don't forget that in four years' time, the Northern Ireland Assembly get to vote on whether to keep the protocol provisions in place. If they vote to keep them in place, they get regular votes to reconfirm it every four or eight years, depending on whether the outcome is a cross-party or one or not. But if they vote against, then the protocol is dismantled two years later. The upshot is that Northern Ireland would be in the single market for a minimum of six years. But I would not want to be in the shoes of the Assembly members who get to vote on this, because I suspect that the vote will be driven more by fear of extra political players than by economic or political reality. I hope I'm proved wrong on that. But I would fervently hope that the government can find a swift route to getting rid of that UK internal market destroying withdrawal agreement. Anyway, if you want to hear more from me, please don't forget to subscribe and also press that little bell or you won't get any notifications. And if you want to see more of me, buy a mug with my mug on it by following the link in the descriptions box below and support me on Patreon or PayPal. So what do you think about this? Please share and comment and... Thank you for watching.